Good morning, everybody, and welcome to... Well, I would say the vloggy thing, but it's not really a vlog. It's more of a educational thing. I'm trying to pass on information. More of a learning thing, one should say. So let's go with that. Learning with Chrono it is. Haven't used that intro in forever. So I'm gonna start out with a little bit, a little bit of a story. So I was at a friend of mine's house a couple years ago, actually, and you know his his friend was also there. So a friend of a friend was there, and he asked to use the wall outlet to charge his phone. And you know, of course, my friend's like, "Yeah, go ahead. It's you're charging a phone. It doesn't take that much electricity." So he plugs in the phone, and then he starts mentioning about how he, you know, hates charging his phone. He hates the fact that his phone doesn't last the entire day because it always takes several hours to charge his phone. Like, something ridiculous. It took like seven hours to charge his phone. So I'm like, let me see your charger. No, seriously, let me see your charger. He hands me the charger, and I look at it, and I look at one piece of information, and I go, well, there's your problem. And I go to my friend, and I'm like, let me see your charger. He hands me his charger, and I look at it and go, okay, use that one. <laughs> and an hour later, his phone was charged. And that little piece of information that a lot of you out there will probably go, well, duh, no crap. But a surprising amount of people just don't know these things. That's the information I want to lay out for today. Um, there's a little tiny piece of useful information that well, it may come in handy in the future. So, let's start with a little fun. This is a USB charger. Quite obvious. I mean, you probably have like a dozen of these in your house. I know I do. Tablets, phones, my camera. I get them from like everywhere. In fact, on my desk right now, including this one, I have eight of them. So, it's got the standard wall jack input which obviously will look slightly different depending on what country you're from. I'm from the US, so we have the two straight prongs, mostly because it doesn't need a grounding plug, so we don't have the third one. And it's got a standard USB-B output. That's B, right? Where's that A? You know what? I don't remember anymore. I think that's B. Yeah, the, 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 the more square one is the A, and this one's a B. And of course, we're getting C, which is, you know, invertible. It's based off a of micro USB. Eh, another freaking cable to keep in my drawer. But, you know, whatever. So, um, got that. And then I got this guy, which is stem basically the same thing. I mean, re right? They look exactly the same outside of a few aesthetic changes. This one's curvy in this direction. This one's curvy in that direction. So they're pretty much the same, right? Wrong. They are not the same. This guy is actually one of my cheapest USB chargers. It would probably charge my phone, and for comparison's sake, I have a Samsung Note 4. Big ass goddamn battery in the back of this thing. Huge, huge battery. Set to low power mode, it's rated to run for 17 days. On regular use, it's rated for five days. Not kidding, it does it. It really does, actually. I kind of got annoyed with it after I first bought it because with my previous phone, a Nexus 4, I'd have to, I'd charge it every night. So basically, I'd go to bed, I'd plug it in, I'd charge it, and I wouldn't even think about the battery after that. It would, you know, the battery was powerful enough that it would run all day, and then I'd charge it at night, and I'd never have to think about it. That guy, well, if you have a battery that that's, that's that big, you don't want to charge it every night because you'll destroy the battery. The goal is actually to get the battery run down to about 10% and then charge it. That's how you get the longest battery life. Another piece of information. So because I have a battery that large, I actually had to start paying attention to my battery level now. So I don't charge it every night. Um, but because it has such a large battery, charging it is a pain in the ass. This charger, my cheapest charger, would probably charge it in, I don't know, nine hours, maybe 10, 
we might be talking about double digits hour wise here. So basically I'd plug it in in the morning and maybe it'd be charged by night. Maybe. This guy, I plug it in, it would take eh, seven, eight hours to charge. So what's the difference? Well, very big, important different in very tiny, itty bitty text on these bastards. This guy right here, my cheapo, the output is the important information. There's two pieces of information on there. Actually, there's quite a few pieces of information on there, depending on which kind of charger you have. But two important pieces of information for you is the input, which in my case, I should be pay, you know, watching out, looking for 110 approximately volts input. And the output is the important part here when you're talking about charging a phone or any USB device. This guy's output is five volt, which is standard USB, 500 milliamp. Okay, so 0.5 amps. This guy's output hidden in all of this text here is five volt, again, standard USB, 750 milliamp. And I said that this bastard would probably charge my phone in maybe seven hours. Out of all of the USB chargers I have sitting on my desk right now, two of them are actually the same. This guy, which I got with a Chromecast, the brand new Chromecast 2, the round one, it is, outputs, 5 volt, standard USB, 1 amp. So literally twice what this guy outputs. This guy is a USB charger, even though it's got a cable attached to it. It's, that's the only difference, really. It's got a permanent cable. It's actually a micro USB charger. I've used this charger to charge my phone. Uh, what are you? You are... Phihonic. Phihong. I have no idea what company that is. Uh, it outputs 5 volt, 1 amp. So these are basically the same exact thing. Now, as I mentioned, the 750 milliamp hour will charge my phone in maybe seven hours. The one amp will charge my phone in, you know, five hours, approximately. I'm rough guessing here because I've never gone from completely empty to completely full. I don't let my battery drain that far. So that many hours, it's not really practical. Okay, because a lot of people, they'll drain their batteries quick. Even a big honking battery like I have, they'll drain their batteries quick and they need to charge it quick. So Samsung, knowing this, used one of the more modern USB uh, specifications. And they came up with a slightly unique charger for this guy, adaptive fast charging. Its output is the standard 5 volt, 2 amp. So literally twice this guy. So we're talking four times the power of this bastard. And it, yeah, it's five volt, two amp, or, and this is probably where the adaptive comes in, nine volt, which is not a standard USB uh, specification, 1.67 amp. Now the reason it goes up in the voltage and down in the amperage is due to Ohm's law. Don't ask me to explain it. I don't understand it at all. I just know that, you know, it's, there's voltage, wattage, and amperage. Those are the three numbers when it comes to electricity. And two of them are on one side of the equals sign and one of them's on the other. And if you change this one, you have to change these ones and they're proportional. So if this goes up, this goes down or something like, it. I don't understand it really. But that's why it's nine volt and 1.67 amp or the lower five volt and higher two amp. Now, what does this mean to you? How important is this to you? Well, not a lot important, but it is a useful little piece of information. If you have a smartphone, a modern day smartphone, and you're plugging it into a cheap USB charger that you bought at the you know, gas station, and it takes like five hours to charge your phone, that's why. If you look at the output on your charger, there's a very good chance it says like 500 milliamps. Or if you're uh, really unlucky, like my dad, 200 milliamp. I didn't know they made USB chargers that low. 
I really didn't. Um, he was using a Hero 4, and he was doing a thing with it. He was adjusting settings, and he's making a thing that I'll probably cover later on for the Hero 4, so it had to stay on for long periods of time. So he plugged it into charge because the battery was obviously getting low after a while, and then a little while later it turned off and didn't turn back on again. He emails me asking what the problem is, and the first thing I think is, what's the amperage output on your USB charger? And he comes back, 0.2 amp, so 200 milliamp. I'm like, well, there's your problem. I bet you that 4K freaking camera takes up more power than 0.2 amp. So if you want to charge the battery and use the bloody thing at the same time, you're going to be needing to output more power than that. So I think he got a good USB charger, something probably in the amp range, one amp range, and uh, was able to continue his work. <laughs> I actually wanted to get my hands on the 0.2 amp charger for this video, but uh, I, I didn't see him today. He's off doing another thing, another crazy ass thing. He does that a lot. And uh, so he, he couldn't find the charger and I wasn't going to ask him to take time away from his day to look for the charger for a silly little video I'm making. So yeah, if you have a phone or any device that charges via USB, keep an eye on the output amperage out there because chances are El Cheapo USB charger that you picked up for like a buck fifty at the gas station is not going to be outputting enough power. Now there is a little bit of a concern. I'm fairly sure, about 90% sure, that the original rating for USB was 1 amp max. Maybe 1.5. I might be a little mistaken on that. Modern day USB ratings, 2.1 amp. In fact, that's this guy right here, the NVIDIA USB charger. Big honking thing, isn't it? This is for my NVIDIA Shield tablet. It outputs 5.2 volt which is actually the high end of the USB specification, 2.1 amp. So it, it outputs some power. It outputs some serious power because the NVIDIA Shield tablet sucks up some serious power. I mean, it, it's designed as a gaming tablet, so it has a pretty honking processor and a pretty honking video card in it. And I think it's got two big-ass batteries in it too. So if you want to charge and use it at the same time, you need to be outputting some power. So they included a really nice high-powered charger for it. But older devices, like say for example, my original Nexus One phone, it can't input 2.1 amp. Now, as far as I'm aware, if I took that charger and plugged it into my Nexus One, it wouldn't hurt the Nexus One because the 5.2 volt is still within USB specifications and it will only draw as much power as it needs. So it will draw maybe an amp, maybe 1.5 amp, but it won't draw the 2.1 amp and the charger won't shove 2.1 amp down the pipe. Like I said, I don't fully understand the electric electricity thing, but I think it's the voltage that destroys electronics. You plug too, too high a voltage into an electronic device, that's what blows it up. I'm not 100% sure about that, but I think that's what it is. I think, because that's why you have to be actively using a thing to measure its amperage, but you can measure a voltage from a wall outlet without having anything plugged into it. I think. Not 100% sure about that. Uh, well, no, let me rephrase that. I am 100% sure that you have to have an active device using power before you can measure the amperage, but you don't have to have an active device before you can measure the voltage. That I know for a fact. Um, but having the correct voltage but the wrong amperage hurting something, I don't think is a problem. Uh, I have plugged in high-powered chargers into older devices and not had a problem before. So I think I'm right on that one. But don't, don't quote me on that. Be very careful about your electronics. I am overly paranoid about electricity. But modern day devices, modern day cell phones specifically, are designed for fast charging. They're designed with more modern 
USB specifications in mind. So if you have a really fancy smartphone and you're using an El Cheapo USB charger from the gas station, spend a little bit more money, go down to Best Buy or some electronics place and buy a two amp USB charger. Guaranteed it will charge your phone faster because chances are that cheapo USB charger from the gas station is 0.2 amp or possibly 0.5 amp if you're lucky. Actually was down at the gas station today seeing if I could find one of those El Cheapo USB chargers. They used to sell them down there. They don't sell them down there anymore. It's all the, the, the cigarette outlet charger, which probably has the same limitation. Um, different electronics, same, you know, amperage issues. So be careful with that too. But uh, yeah, so hopefully that was a useful piece of information that taught somebody something. God only knows. And, uh, you know, let me know if it actually helped you. Let me know if you knew that. You might have actually known that. And, uh, you know, the standard USB things like subscribe, that kind of thing. And I will see you guys in the next episode. And as always, keep playing the game and have fun.